Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Sarastro's Marvel Crisis Protocol painting series. In this video I'll be sharing my approach to painting Juggernaut from Atomic Mass Games Marvel Crisis Protocol. Juggernaut's outfit has a fairly analogous reddish brown colour scheme and offers plenty of opportunities to enjoy a range of textures including worn leather and shiny metal. The figure also has some fun options for the left hand, one wielding a traffic light and one without. I'm going to begin the video with a look at how I went about magnetising the left hand, before priming the figure ready for painting. To paint the figure I'll be laying down some pretty dark base colours, before providing some black lining to help separate the parts. I'll then provide the highlights, creating a nice range of textures and finishes along the way. Because I jumped around a bit whilst painting, I've chosen to present each section of the miniature individually, rather than in a strictly chronological fashion. That way you'll be able to more easily find the colours and techniques I used for each part, which you can also find bookmarked in the video for ease of reference. Let's begin. I'm going to begin by magnetising the two left hands and the adjoining arm, using magnets that are 2mm in diameter and 1mm thick. I'm first using the WOW stick hobby drill with a 2mm drill bit to drill into each of the hands and the arm. The main thing to avoid here is drilling too deep. If you do however, padding the gap with a little green stuff and pressing the magnet in works fine. I find it helpful to attach the magnet to something metal like this Citadel mold line remover. I'm now applying a touch of super glue gel by Gorilla before pressing the magnet into place. It goes without saying that we should ensure that the polarities of the adjoining magnets correctly match up. I'm just pressing this one down as firmly as I can to ensure it sits nice and flush. With the upper arm now glued into place, we're free to swap the two hands out as we like. This is of course entirely optional. As usual I'm priming the figure in black, followed with some grey and white zenithal highlights applied from above. With that done, we're now ready to begin painting. I'm going to begin with the base, where I'm first just loosely laying down some bluish grey tones with some graphite, where I blended into some abyssal blue and a touch of black for the shadows, and I'll be using some white sands to sketch in a few highlights. A little dry brushing will really help sharpen the textures. Next I've chosen to use some thinned contrast colours to darken the grooves and provide some additional colour variation. I'm mainly using Griff Charger Grey along with some Black Templar for the shadows, and I'm adding a few touches of the Skeleton Horde just to vary the tone. I'm now doing a last bit of dry brushing with the white sands, along with a few final manual highlights. As usual I like to sprinkle a little urban scatter over some thinned PVA glue. And I'm also gluing down a few small bricks which I picked up on Etsy along with some printed out newspapers, which you can find a link to in the video description. I'm now just finishing things off with a few highlights for the bricks. For 
the boots and the torso, I'm going to begin with a bass tone using an equal mix of red leather and deep red. I'll then highlight up to Aldebaran red, before using Tanera yellow to create my brightest highlights, along with a nicely weathered texture. So here's my bass tone mix of red leather and deep red. A second layer might be needed to achieve full opacity. I'm now adding increasing amounts of Aldebaran red to highlight up to my midtone. It's worth noting how much darker the paint will appear once it's dry. I'm now using pure Aldebaran red, and you might notice how I'm often applying the paint in quite a sketchy way to create some texture. Next I'm using some pure Tanera yellow to add some super scratchy highlights, over which I'll be glazing on some of the red in a moment. I'm now thinning some of the red down to a heavy glaze consistency, and simply brushing it over the top. This helps integrate the scratchy highlights, and allows for a more vibrant red to present itself in the brightest spots. We can freely go back and forth a bit with additional highlights and glazes, to achieve whatever levels and richness of texture we like. For the torso, where I want a slightly smoother look, I'm mixing the Tanera yellow into the red to add my highlights. And if things start looking a little too desaturated, I might still glaze over some of the red. I'm now painting the raised stripes on the torso, using a roughly equal mix of black and abyssal blue, which I'll then highlight with the addition of some white sands. You could of course leave these red if you like, I just wanted to break things up a bit. I'm now mixing in some white sands to create a bluish grey highlight tone. Finally, as a finishing touch, I'm returning to the boots to add some muddy weathering, using a mix of field grey and thar brown.
Moving on to the areas of brown leather, I'm starting with a bass tone, using an equal mix of brown leather and red leather. I'll then be adding orange leather with a little Aldebaran red to highlight up to the mid-tone. And for the brighter highlights, I'll be mixing in some Tanera yellow, followed by a thinned mix of Seraphim Sepia and Reichland Flesh Shade. So here's the bass tone mix of brown and red leather. Notice that using a common tone in both of the main base colours for the outfit, in this case the red leather, is a nice way to achieve some colour harmony. I'm now adding increasing amounts of orange leather along with a little Aldebaran red to begin building up the highlights. I'm now using just the orange leather with Aldebaran red, and I'm once again building up a more textured look, using a combination of little lines and stippling. I'm now adding some Tanera yellow for the brighter highlights. Needless to say, this is a somewhat time-consuming technique, but I find a kind of zen-like joy in the process. This is as bright as I chose to go. I'm now using an equal mix of Seraphim Sepia and Reichland Flesh Shade, thinned down with a fair bit of medium to tint the area and integrate the highlights. I want to keep this nice and light so as to preserve the underlying textures. Thinned down inks are also good for this kind of thing. Once dry, we can see we've achieved a pretty nice worn leather look. And just as with the boots, we can freely add some additional fine highlights and texture. I 
As another nice little character detail, I chose to add a couple of rips to the leggings, starting by drawing a thin strip using the skin tone. I'm now drawing round this with the dark leather base tone, followed with some irregular highlights on top to create the impression of relief. I'm now doing a little tidying up and refining. And these are my last few touches of highlight and texture. Before moving on to the skin, I'm first drawing in the eyes and teeth using some nacar. And I'm now placing some pupils using black. For the skin, I've chosen to use Scale Colors Smooth Acrylic Paints, and I'm starting with some pink flesh, which I'm darkening down with some red ochre, purple, and a touch of black. After a bit of playing around, I ended up with a loose gradient, which I'm using to provide my shadow tone, as well as the main areas of mid-tone. You could of course use whatever light skin tone colors you're most comfortable with, I just felt like trying some fresh ideas for Juggernaut. Here you can see me mapping out the shadows, and then blocking in the mid-tone for the lighter areas. I still found I had to build the mid-tone up in a couple of layers however. And here I'm just using an intermediate tone to soften some of the transitions. Alternatively, you could just apply the shadow tone over the whole area, and apply the mid-tone highlights on top, as I'm doing here. I'm now going to highlight up to a roughly equal mix of pink flesh and golden flesh. I'll then be adding increasing amounts of vanilla white for the brighter highlights, and I'm going to have a little red and some pastel green on standby to allow me to create some further variations of tone. So this is the pink flesh and golden flesh mix, which I'm going to highlight up to from the shadow tone. I sometimes like to thin the paint down and brush it up into the area of highlight to help soften the transitions. I'm once again doing a little stippling whilst building up these highlights. I 
Along the way, I'm introducing a little of the red for areas like the elbows and the knuckles. And for some of the veins, I'm mixing in a little of the pastel green. This is now the pure pink and golden flesh mix. These paints have quite a matte finish, but with just a subtle sheen, which I find works well for skin tones as well as non-metallic metal effects. I'm also adding a little red to the nose area. I'm now adding some of the vanilla white to achieve the brighter highlights. I'm also making adjustments to some of the shadow areas as I go, such as here where I felt this indented groove was a little too dark. And here where I'm bringing up the saturation a little with a touch of the red ochre and purple. I'm now adding my last few highlights and refinements. And this completes the skin. Next I'm going to paint the studs on the belt with abyssal blue, which I'll simply be highlighting up with white sands in a moment. For the belt itself, I ended up creating a dark mix of black leather, brown leather and black. I'm now highlighting the studs by adding increasing amounts of white sands to the abyssal blue. Large areas of non-metallic metal would usually require a much wider range of tones, but for small areas like this we can get away with being quite minimal. We can go all the way up to pure white sands for the brightest glints. I'm now going to highlight the belt by mixing varying amounts of white sands and Tenera yellow into the base tone.
and once again going with some pretty scratchy textures here. And I'm now glazing over some of the base colour to tone things back down. For the Crimson Cosmos armour, I'm starting with a base tone made with an equal mix of Burnt Sienna Umber and Red Ochre. I'll then map out my mid-tones using pure Red Ochre, before pushing the highlights all the way up by adding increasing amounts of intense yellow and white. I'm then going to glaze on some red, orange and purple to add tonal interest and to boost the saturation of the mid-tones in particular. So here's my base tone mix of Burnt Sienna Umber and Red Ochre. This will need two layers to achieve a solid finish. I'm now using a greater amount of the red ochre to begin placing my main areas of highlight. The only decision I've really made with the helmet is that I want a bright primary highlight here on the top, with a pattern of various secondary highlights and reflections elsewhere. This is now pure red ochre. I'm now adding increasing amounts of yellow and white to begin building the highlights up. I want most of these edges to be quite bright. You can make things as smooth, scratchy or as stipply as you like. Once again, I might occasionally switch to a thinner consistency to soften things out. There's also nothing wrong with backtracking to the midtones if necessary. Areas like this are really just a canvas to play around with, and I'll often go back and forth trying out different patterns of highlight and reflection to see what works.
This is now virtually pure white. And I'm now continuing to push things around until I'm happy with the general pattern of light and shade. And once again making sure that I've picked out most of these edges. Next I'm going to freely glaze on some red, orange and purple to add some visual interest and intensity, especially for the midtones. I'm starting with some of the red. This is now the orange. And here I'm trying some of the purple. For most of the armour I ended up using varying amounts of the red and orange. As well as boosting the saturation, this also helps soften out some of the transitions. Here I'm just picking out the rivets using a mix of black and abyssal blue which I'm now highlighting with the addition of some white sands. I'm now returning to the armour to add a few fine scratches along with a final boost for some of the highlights. Finally I'm going to throw some colour onto the traffic light using a base tone of Sahara yellow darkened with a little black leather, followed with some highlights using Sol yellow, Tenera yellow and some white sands. I'm painting the actual lights in black. And here I'm stippling on some grey highlights. For the pole I'm just using a bluish grey scale, once again using black, abyssal blue and white sands. You can see I'm being pretty rough in how I paint this.
I also glazed on a little turquoise, along with some brown tones from the palette to add interest. And here I'm glazing some red, orange and green onto the lights, but keeping things pretty dull. I also varied the colour of the wires. And this completes Juggernaut. Thank you for joining me, I hope you have enjoyed the episode. Don't forget you can find a full product list in the video description, along with links to my social media accounts, as well as sarastro.com, where you can find a growing number of free PDF guides to complement the videos. My sincerest thanks go to my amazing patrons for funding this series. I simply couldn't do this work without them. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Happy painting! <laughs>